I think the important thing about Share the Road uh, as an initiative is that it is not only establishing what the issue is in terms of the shortcomings in infrastructure investment, but it's also looking at ways in which we can help people in practical ways uh, as they are designing and planning new roads to incorporate the needs of the non-motorised user. Then we're confident that Share the Road can make a real difference, can really save lives and can really liberate people to walk to school safely, to go to work safely. Share the Road initiative, to me I look at it as the ray of hope for Africa. This is the only hope that we can see. The Share the Road initiative is excellent in uh, bringing in the urgency that is needed in uh, creating facilities for walkers, creating facilities for bicycles. Share the Road initiative that we have now launched here in East Africa. Everybody agrees that what is happening right now in terms of road construction isn't rational, but it continues to happen. Part of our effort has to be to bring the voices of the majority, the poor people who rely on non-motorized transport, to the table. Let me give an example of Kibera, Kibera slum, which is uh, one of the biggest, actually, slums in Africa, uh, with over a million people. Each morning, those people, because they are poor people, each morning they walk to town. But we have no provision, no walkways. We still recognize that the attitude is such that the road is meant for the car. Deaths on the roads are, are the biggest cause uh, of, of early deaths for young people around the globe. That's terrifying. And they're costing countries upwards of $100 billion a year. In, in individual households, these are tragedies uh, in situations where people understandably need mobility to access uh, economic prosperity, to which they have a complete right. But they don't have a safe means uh, or an environmentally friendly and therefore relatively inexpensive means of accessing that prosperity. So it's a vicious circle. You're taking your life in your hands to go to work. Your child's taking its life in its hands to go to school. And that's both unfair and economically damaging. But this is the reality. This is the Nairobi. Everybody who rides a bicycle is like they have a death wish. Their vehicles, the matatus, Nobody has the respect for the cyclist, but it is a tough thing. But this is the life we spend in every day. It's tough. But I hope one day, with a share the road campaign, one day we'll be having segregated bicycle paths that are safe for all of us to enjoy ourselves. Most people think that road is constructed for the cars only. Now, that has an influence on the leadership of the country and especially the policymakers. So there is a lot of pressure to construct new roads. There is a lot of pressure for, for the improvement of the carriageway so that then the roads can have and move smoothly. But we haven't seen lots of pressure even from the media, the NGO, the civil society, to push for the agenda to their leaders, especially the policymakers, that the road is not just for the cars. Share the Road has to succeed in forming a new coalition of interests, a coalition between those who plan, those who finance, those who set the policies, and those who actually are the majority of road users, or those who are being marginalized in the use of roads. We need policies in government that simply lay down criteria, just like an engineer determines criteria for the design of a road. In future, no road should be built without a minimum provision for pedestrian and where relevant also bicycle lanes. These are not luxury concepts, these are fundamental lessons learned. Share the Road concept is absolutely great, a uh, brilliant concept, and it's got everybody you know, aligned to what needs to happen. But we've got to make it happen, and making it happen is all about building the roads in a safe and uh, sustainable way. Uh, and also it's going to be very important that the roads are maintained. Uh, when we did the original IRAP survey, we found that about half of the road safety problems were actually things that should have been fixed as part of routine maintenance. And I think there's a big message here about construction and maintenance and uh, you know, good, good words, 
you know, it could turn into nice pieces of paper, but they've actually got to turn into concrete and asphalt uh, before they actually save lives. If you look at across the developing world today, the number of people working today, and especially to work, that share is enormous. And this is what we need to understand as our strength for any future action on weather pollution or climate change. This is the strength that we will have to protect. Because today when we are working with variety of strategies to reduce dependence on personal vehicles, we want to scale up public transportation. But understand, each and every public transport trip begins and ends with a walk trip. Which means that if you want most of your city dwellers to use public transportation, you'll have to create space for people to walk to even access the public transport. Now, therefore, your public transport design has to align with pedestrian design, the walk design of the city. And that is something which is totally missing in the way the cities are being planned today. As a pedestrian, you have to keep on walking back on the road because the place, the shoulders are not paved. In fact, there are a lot of holes if you walk at night it's very easy to break your legs. When the roads are done in this country, they're not done for people, they're done for cars. So that is why most of the pedestrians keep on getting hit by cars, because they have to come back to the road. The cyclist is trying to squeeze themselves on the road, they get crushed and they have nowhere to go. So it's a very dangerous place, uh, but we have seen a light at the end of the tunnel the Decade of Action is being launched around the globe and is going to be focusing on raising awareness of the huge cost of uh, unsafe roads uh, and unsafe driver behaviour. The features to make a safe road are very similar to the features of making an environmentally sustainable road because they centre on protecting the non-motorised user. So, Share the Road is very much part of the family of Decade of Action activities. Our initiative now by working with governments, with the private sector, with civil society and also with the public is to finally bring something that we have all recognized for years to bear upon the future development of road infrastructure here and nowhere else in the world will more roads be built, expanded, tarmac in the coming decades than in Africa. So it is the right place for us to start and I hope it will set an example of how a coalition around the notion of sharing the road, not to in a sense create a competition of pedestrians and cyclists against car drivers, but rather a new coalition. That has to be the purpose and I think it will change the way we look at roads in the future.